I'll try to keep this brief. Battle War 5 is a really, 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 really good story. It actually has the highest story score of any game I've ever given. The gameplay is... there. It feels a lot like they were trying to kind of have an in-between of Dark Souls and, you know, your typical beat-em-up gameplay that the God of War series was known for. A similar problem that God of War 4 had. And I honestly just don't think they succeed. The controls are a little bit too awkward, and the camera's a little bit too awkward, and the enemy design isn't that great, and the encounter design is actively bad, and the puzzle design is kind of frustrating, and there's a whole lot of weird little bits of padding and trash problems, and the whole experience is just kind of... mid. It is telling that the gameplay of this game got a net plus three, which probably doesn't sound much to you if you don't know the system, but zero is dead center, right? Anything negative is negative, anything positive is positive, so zero is mid. And on average, a game gets closer to 20 pluses or negatives to something. In fact, this game got 127 pluses to story and three pluses to gameplay. I feel like that says it all. Um, I, I, as weird as it sounds, I'm not even sure what else to add to that. Except that I wanted to talk about something. Oh, speaking of which, I said I would do my four things. Uh, story, core is, is a thumbs up. Story, presentation is a thumbs up. Core gameplay is a thumbs down. Gameplay presentation is a thumbs up. I've never seen an options menu and accessibility menu better than this. The only possible contestant for that would be The Last of Us 2. And there's a lot of weirdly good polish when it comes to the specifics of game design decisions. Uh, like the quali li little quality of life stuff all over the place. Um, the fact that, you know, Brock will bring your items together uh, from looting if you didn't actually loot them. Or the fact that you could just turn on auto looting so you don't actually have to bother with it. Or um, being able to change it so that when you're pushing around in combat you can tap R3 or you can rebind R3 in order to, to center on the thing or not. And... All sorts of little stuff like that that just makes the whole experience very, very polished. It's just the actual core gameplay loop I was well and done with by the end of a 35-hour game. That's all. Like I said, calling it bad would be inaccurate. But as I've said many times, I kind of need good gameplay to keep me engaged. Otherwise, I'm just watching a movie. A very, very, very good movie, which I'm not going to give any spoilers about because that's not the point of these. These are kind of spoiler-free post-review wrap-up things. So unfortunately, I can't actually tell you anything about this story because there's effectively nothing I could say that isn't a spoiler. Normally, I'd just cut it off there and say, screw it, but I did want to mention one thing. It's very rare I see a game that nails the story this hard. Uh, nuance. There's a lot of little itty-bitty details in facial animation, in how the voice acting is being presented, in where the camera is pointed, in the choreography of a given scene. There's a whole lot of elements and moments that really add that extra unneeded, but definitely wanted bit of flavor to basically every scene. I have never given a game more moment positives than this one. And for good reason. It's because virtually every cutscene was a positive to some extent or another. It's bonkers. It's bonkers the level of quality that's on display here. And I stand by that. It does fall apart a little bit towards the end, and I have a theory about that, which I can't share, because it'd be a spoiler. You can watch the end of the stream if you want to see it. Um, it has to do with the title and how I think it was misused. There you go, there's your summary. I will add as a further addendum, uh, there was a question that came up a lot during stream. Where would you take the series next? I've actually put a lot of thought into that over the last five days. And personally, what I would do is I would have the game kind of sit on ice, the whole franchise. Let it sit on ice for, I don't know, probably about three years, I'd say, give or take. And then at that point, I'd go ahead and start production on the next game. So to the point where we have a decent amount of production done by the time we get to about the five-year marker. So interest has kind of had that wane and then wax kind of a thing going off. And, or reverse, I always forget which one which. And uh, the the density, the, the saturation of God of War has gone down too. So it's a good moment to go ahead and, hey, we're doing a new God of War game. I would set it in Egypt. I could even picture the cutscene in my head. I actually talked about it on stream. So that would be generally awesome, I think. 
I also think Egypt's the only real logical place for them to go next from a real life perspective, from a marketing perspective, from a budget and executive perspective. But there's a lot of other methods they could touch if all of that stuff was just flung out the window. So that's my question to you. If you just could magically pick a mythos for them to tackle next, which one would you go for? And if applicable, why? Either way, this is a great game. I do highly recommend it, despite my grievances with the gameplay. And if uh, anybody has any comments or questions or tells me how much they hate me, let me know. Oh, I should probably admit that God of War 3 scored better than this. Please don't kill me.